Uh, today we're going to take a look at something a bit different. Now, um, it's for all of those who say this may bear a resemblance to some other uh, media that have been popular recently. I say, well, note there is at least one difference here. And that is, we see the square colors are black, white, black, white, black, white, black, white. And that other media, uh, they had the care to ensure the board was set up with the white square in the lower right corner and the upper left corner. So, uh, this is original content, but yeah, I had hoped for better. I'd hoped that at least they would have flipped this part of it. Anyway, um, yeah, can I defeat 1,024 bytes of JavaScript is the question, which I have been training ever since I invented the game of chess to see if I can defeat 1,024 bytes of JavaScript. Never done this before. I have no idea what this is going to be like. Hopefully, um, it will be okay. Okay, so this does not announce victory or defeat. It just prevents further moving if a player has won the game, and the entire brain fits into 1,024 bytes, only three times the length of this help text, including the board setup and move validation functions. All right, yeah, let's, uh, I don't know, should we take a look at how it works? Uh, puzzled by a pawn move, check up what the rule of ampassant is. Here's the engine code, um, so you can find this engine code over there, uh, courtesy of Oscar Toledo G. Um, yeah, it's award-winning among tiny chess programs for having, I think, a performance rating of about 1,500. Uh, included above or board setup and move validation, etc. It uh, doesn't respond to checkmate or stalemate. Looking four plies ahead, a point system considers factors such as the piece value, strength of areas of the board, and speed of capture victory. Uh, it calls an external function to update the display, and the display code calls functions to trigger moves. So, um, obviously the entire game doesn't fit in 1024 bytes, it's just the engine, in particular this part, that does all the clever stuff. So yeah, many thanks to uh, Pino and Oscar for letting VOLE.WTF reuse their work. All right, that's how it works. Uh, let's get started. Ooh, all right, the board is set up. Uh, let's open with the king pawn, just to be fun. And then open with the queen pawn. And then open with the bishop pawn. All right, then use the knight pawn. No pawn left behind, we like to say. All right. Oh, our pawn's under attack. Let's protect it. Okay, and then let's push this pawn. Hang on, you're not going to stop me from pushing all of my pawns. We have to push all of the pawns. There. All eight pawns have been pushed. All right. Now let's use all the pieces like we've been trained to do. Make sure we move each piece once in the opening. So we've moved a bishop, we've moved a bishop, let's move a knight. All right, let's move another knight. We have moved all the pieces. Uh, let's connect the rooks. There we go. Our rooks are connected. Our king is castled. Everything is perfect. Oh, no pawn on a light square. Indeed. Uh, we have joined the dark side. All right, so... Um, this rook is not on an open file. Let's stick it on an open file. All right, we've moved, well, we've moved every piece other than the rook on a1. The rook on a1 is actually doing an important job here, so let's not confuse it. Um, let's just tuck the king over and stick the king in the corner. All right. All right, this knight uh, would like to participate in an attack. Um, oh, check that out. There's this knight move threatening to go here and check my king and then collect my bishop. Um, all right, let's move the bishop so that doesn't happen. 
Oh no, we lost a pawn. Oh no, let's let's take the bishop. Boom, headshot. All right. Well, that was easy. Oh, sure. Let's exchange queens. Why not? All right. Um, I'm going to attack your rook. Okay, let's put this rook on an open file. And see if this causes the engine to go bananas. Just the fact that I'm attacking something, and it doesn't necessarily know how to defend against the thing I'm attacking. All right, let's bring this knight over to the left side to generate... Oh, our rook's attacked. Let's move it again. But yeah, if you apply pressure... Also, if you leave these check possibilities around, the engine will have to think about it every single turn. Should it check me? Should it not check me? So if this check does absolutely nothing, just leave it sitting there. But always evaluate it every single turn. Um, yeah, we're forcing the engine to do all this work. So now we're going to try to threaten to chase down their king. Uh, no. Um... <laughs> so, now I could take the bishop, and if I take the bishop, I could take the pawn. So, let's do that. Take the bishop. The bishop was defending the pawn. Oh no, my rook's attacked. Um, so my knight's attacked, and my rook is attacked. Uh, there is a tricky move I can do to get out of this, which is I can attack their rook. Their rook is defending this pawn. And now my rook can actually move across and take this pawn. So I was going to give up this knight anyway, but I got a free pawn in a five move combination, or three move for me, two for my opponent. Well, let's hit this knight. Uh, note that the engine's limit, as described in how it works below, was uh, two moves per player. So it was not able to calculate that five move combination because uh, it could only calculate four moves deep. All right, our bishop's attacked. I'm going to set up a cheapo. Um, oh, well, this might not work as well as I thought. All right, whatever. Mm-hmm. Damn. All right, the engine kind of saw what I'm up to and defended against both of my threats with this bishop check and the knight hitting this pawn. Engines are good at catching silly little details, which are pretty important in this game. So I'm going to go back and try to chase the knight and see if I can either coordinate an exchange of pieces, or if I cannot or coordinate such an exchange, um, at least make sure I can... Uh, defend my king so I don't lose my bishop. Alright, free pawn. We're going to take the free pawn. Alright, we're going to chase down this free pawn. Just kidding, it's not actually free. And, yep, we're going to go back and not give up the bishop. Alright, um... Hmm, engine's being resilient as engines are, but my bishop controls all the light squares, so there is nothing to fear but fear itself and fear of fear. All right, so the king has stepped off the light square, so now my bishop check to protect this pawn is no longer available to me. So if I want to protect the well, protecting the pawn does not allow my rook freedom of access to this pawn. This is a dilemma. Because I don't want their rook to go here, hit the bishop, hit the pawn. So I'm going to have to actually give up this edge pawn so that I don't lose all my pawns on the right half of the board. Um, so as I do that, let me... S yeah. Oh, okay, we have a generous opponent today. Uh, yeah. So generous. I guess the engine panicked because my bishop kept attacking this pawn. In every variation, the variation could end with bishop takes pawn. At least until I've actually removed this pawn. So that's something the engine had to look at every single turn, is bishop takes pawn trying to refute every variation. Alright. We're in check. 
They hit the pawn. We defend. All right. Now we're going to have two pawns going up the board. We're in check again. Um, yeah, both of these pawns are going to advance. And we've brought the rook away from attacking these two pawns. Now, beware of stalemate. If I push this pawn, there is a stalemate trick, so let's push this one. Oh no, we're in check. Whatever will we do? Oh no, we're not in check anymore. Alright. What to do? What do you guys think? Should I move this queen down one? Should I move the other queen down one? Should I move this queen to the left one? Should I move this queen to g7 here? Should I move this queen to f6? I don't know. Uh, I could consider moving queen takes pawn. Yeah, queen takes pawn looks like the correct move here. Oh. You know, I'd hoped for a little bit more of a reaction than this. But okay. Uh, yeah, we'll call that a practice game. Let's, let's try again. Sure, let's reset the board. All right, this time let's lead with this pawn. And then this one. And then defend that. All right. Oh, I can't actually take that. Whatever. We're going to lead off with all the pawns if we possibly can. And it appears that we can. There we go. All the pawns have been pushed. That was fun. Now there's just the matter of calculating this... Uh, blizzard of variations that I have bestowed upon us here. Let's put this check first, then this check, and then I considered castling, sacrificing the knight, uh, which does allow me to do another check next. So yeah, let's do that. So now we check and pick up this bishop. Both knights on the back rank are pinned. Um, so neither knight can move, neither rook can move, because moving a rook would lose a knight. Uh, I'm sorry, this rook in the corner, in theory, could move if it had somewhere to move to. It just does not have a destination. Uh, so yeah, we've actually uh, effectively made the computer unable to make a move. Um, accidentally. So... Would you care to exchange bishops? Oh, how thoughtful. All right. So now the king defends the knight. Um, so in theory, this rook could move if it had somewhere to move to. Oh, the king defends the rook. So the computer's actually broken my pin. Well played. Man, I thought I had this in the bag. It's actually going to be a little bit tricky. So let's just use all of the pieces. All right, let's uh, lure the king into the corner, where it's perfectly safe, I'm sure. Um, here, go ahead, take a couple pawns. You like pawns, right? How much do you like pawns? Do you want this one too? Oh, my rook's attacked. I better move it. Notice, if this knight moves, knight f7 is checkmate. I've pinned the knight. So now the engine's panicking. Um, and trying to find a way to get out of this checkmate that it walked right into. Um, so, yeah, we're just attacking your rook now, in addition to attacking your knight. Um, knight f7 checkmate is still a threat. Bishop takes knight is a threat. Bishop takes rook is no longer present. Um, yeah, that's where we're at right now. Um... I think I have to take the knight. That's unfortunate. I had such a good thing going here. Alright, so... Oh, wait a second. Do I get to demonstrate a bishop and knight checkmate if I trade off the rooks? Um, I don't think such a thing could happen here. Let's see, if I check with the knight... The king blocks the rook. 
Yeah, I don't have a way to force a rook exchange without losing my knight. Otherwise, I would definitely demonstrate the bishop knight mate. We're going to have to be a little bit more patient to come up with such an opportunity. All right, let's just take the free pawn. Yep, so the king is still corralled. Um, all right, they finally liberate their king and try to unpin the knight. Um, yeah, this endgame is actually pretty brutal. I don't know why I volunteered to go into this. Hmm. All right, let's threaten something else, which is this check. And following this check, I can just take the free knight. So the engine correctly points out that my knight cannot move at the moment. Um, but I could move the rook and exchange both of these pieces for the rook and still win the ensuing endgame. That's one possibility. Um, actually, losing the rook here is not the worst thing either. It just, uh, unfortunately, the endgame is lost, or not winning. Um, let me think. Yeah, this should be fine. This is funny. I hope this works. So they are attacking my rook. If I take this pawn, rook takes rook, knight check, king moves somewhere, I take the rook, and then I get to demonstrate the bishop and knight checkmate. Perfect. Let's do it. Didn't see this little combination, did ya? Alright. So, it's you, we have to count 50 moves from when my king takes the pawn. That's when the 50 move rule takes effect. So note that my bishop and knight are uh, both on light squares, which means that they create this wall that the king cannot penetrate. So I just waltz my king right over. Uh, computer's not putting up much of a fight doesn't really see the mate threat. That's too bad. Would have liked a little bit of drama. Um, oh well. All right, king is stuck in the corner. The king and the bishop themselves are enough to force the king here. So now we have to do the slightest bit of calculation. Uh, it's not much. All right, I'm going to have to put the bishop somewhere else, and then check, and then checkmate. All right, well, I think we've demonstrated the efficacy of uh, using all of your pieces. Um, so uh, possibly the first game was a, a bit more sensical than the second one. But I think both of them turned out well. Um, I thought that was also an interesting demonstration of the bishop and knight mate. Admittedly, going for that knight fork, where I did knight takes pawn, they take my rook, I check with the knight, the king moves, and then I do knight takes their rook. That five move combination was too deep for this engine. Um, I do wonder if I were to crank up the depth somehow, again we could go to how it works below, if we could somehow increase the depth here. So it was not capped at four, but could somehow cap it at six or something. I might have a, a more interesting challenge. I just don't know where I would go in this block of code to actually increase the difficulty. Um, but yeah, this is a fascinating game. Uh, thanks so much to... I forget who recommended this. But yeah, this is the Kilobytes Gambit. Um... I guess I call on other chess players to try this Kilobytes Gambit challenge. If you're looking for an extra challenge, push all the pawns first. Um, obviously, Rosen has no time for this and uh, would destroy it. Would probably have to give a stronger handicap than I offered here, but 
Um, yeah, I think other folks uh, may find this an interesting experiment. Um, it would be a way for uh, folks to gather some a build uh, gather some measurement about whether or not they can calculate uh, as deep as uh, this particular engine can. And it's possible on different computers, you might get different results too. So maybe I just got super lucky on this computer. Uh, I saw there is some call to random somewhere in this code. So maybe I just got super lucky too. You never know. Um, but yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed. Thanks for watching. See you next time.